3, 2. Recording, recording, recording. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sober Swole Podcast. My name is Jake Howard. Oh, I didn't switch it over. I almost hit it again and I caught myself. <gasps> there he is. I go by DJ Swirl. Chocolate and vanilla swirl. What's up, everyone? And before we get started, as always, we'll give a shout out to Royalty Nutrition. It's royaltynutrition.com. And to help me out, that is Warhorse. Hey, it's Warhorse. Do you want your workouts to look like this? Or do you want your workouts to slay? When Warhorse picks his pre-workout, he wants it to slay. If you want second place, go with somebody else. If you want to be a champion, go with Royalty Nutrition. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Royalty Nutrition is a veteran-owned and operated supplement company that doesn't automatically go to use the cheapest ingredients possible while making their supplements for you. Check them out and use the discount code 37HAKE to save you 15% on your entire order. My next shout-out of the evening will be to Gorilla Gains. That's, ooh, that's Gorilla-Gains with a Z. Dot com. They are a fitness apparel company that also makes great equipment that helps keep you safe while you train. Check them out. Use the discount code Jake15 to save you 15% on that order as well. My last shout out of the evening will be to me. That's patreon.com backslash Hake Jowart. It's where I uh, am doing my training log, um, blog style writings, and I also do a solo show. I do that once a month. I actually need to get on that uh, for November. Check it out and support your boy, DJ Swirl. Tell him about the Buy to Buy Empire. Yeah! Yes, Buy to Buy, where we specialize in fast, friendly, on-demand moving, delivery, staging, TV mounting, and assembly, which means we help everyone from housewives shopping at home goods to bros DIYing it at Lowe's, but most frequently, property managers, and real estate agents helping their clients move from their current space to their new place. They say teamwork makes the dream work, but what about that nightmare? Whether it's your landlord or your dashboard, life won't play flair. Flair. Yeah! Fair. So, if you lack time or you got a bad spine, we're here to support you, giving you peace of mind from the time you buy until we say goodbye. What you're watching here is Buy to Buy Studios. Creative consulting and content creation, helping boutique brands boost their presence online. From the simple stories, posts, and reels to full-fledged podcasts and live streaming, we are creativity customized, providing high quality, low stress, and remote control. Hit us up everywhere you are at buy to buy studios or buy to buy.com forward slash studios. Uh, I want to take a quick second to give a shout out to my BNI chapter out here in Arizona, that is BNI East Valley Entrepreneurs. Uh, we have, I think, six, five or six new members, and uh, they're all getting brought on. We've got Logan with Kitchen Tune Up. We have Kay with Airborne Cosmetics, Alessandro as a, a Copper State Pressure, and then we have Monica. She's with, uh, she's our new health insurance provider. And uh, we've got a young cat. He is 18 years old. His name's Brayden. He uh, does Foothills Auto Detail. I want to give a shout out to the new members. I am the new member mentor coordinator, so I'm helping bring them along, um, get them involved with everything that's going on with their group to make sure that um, they are able to succeed and that they become a power partner with multiple people within the group. So if you have a small business, you are local, and you would like to expand your network, hit me up anywhere you see me at buy to buy uh, to reach out to discuss. We're looking for general contractors. We're looking for electricians, uh, solar. I know I have a, st a hairstylist I'm trying to reach out to. I've got a couple of people in my network that would like to reach out to and see if extend the have them show up as a visitor so they can see what it's about. Because everyone who joins says that they get uplifted, that they uh, have a boost of energy heading into the work that they've been doing for a long time because of the energy within the group. So I love to have anybody in my network come through and check that out. Jake, let me stop talking. What are we talking about tonight? Why are you going to stop talking? We're going right to you. <laughs> oh, no. 
Oh boy. Yeah. So yeah, you've had an, an interesting week. I've had an interesting week, man. Um, it's been a couple weeks since we've spoken on here, right? So yeah, uh, a lot's happened. Um, most notably the uh, the partnership that I have with uh, Spin and Bird Scooters um, has finally gotten uh, rectified. Yeah. So now not only have I been paid accordingly, but also our strategy, our strategery, if you will, is about to be put into place. And so uh, we will now be kicking some serious ass in downtown Phoenix and Tempe and uh, looking forward to where that's headed. Um, I am not an official partner with electric bikes, but I picked one of theirs up and along with a, uh, a cargo bike trailer and I am scooting around, no longer scooting, I am just cruising around town on this bike, this electric bike that uh, pulls this 250 pounds with ease, and I'm going about 20 miles an hour doing so. So if you see me uh, early in the mornings, <laughs> uh, say what's up, but uh, shout out to Electric Bikes. Um, they are Phoenix-based, and uh, hopefully we can link up and, and, and make this something serious, not only in Phoenix, but in every market that Spin and Bird serves nation, potentially. But uh, uh, piggybacking off of that, um, was it yesterday? Was today Wednesday? Um, I was downtown Phoenix, uh, scooting around, swapping batteries. Got about sixty done, and then parked on the northeast corner of Jackson and Third Street downtown, which is smack in between the foot, the Footprint Center, and Chase Field. And so I parked there. I only had one more battery that I could possibly swap, and I was hungry because I woke up at four. I had gone about four hours uh, without any food or um, a break. And so I stopped to go get breakfast at the Breakfast Club, which is right next to the uh, outdoor rooftop bar that I used to DJ at, which is no longer called Luster. Broke my heart a little bit, but, you know, things change. And so, um, yeah, I went there, got breakfast, fantastic. And then uh, on the way back, I needed to hotspot my phone so that way I could get back on the map on the app to find a unit that needed a battery swapped found a found a unit and proceeded to grab it and then ride it back over to my van swap the battery leave it there to be available for service and then head back home and the unit that i got was on its last leg the battery was almost dead and once it gets dead it won't even power up but it's a it'll allow you to be a, a kick scooter but this one had enough juice to where it gets you about eight maybe ten miles an hour and so um, because we service these, we are on the sidewalk because that's typically where people leave them. They don't put them nice and neat on the curb or on the street in the designated nice painted box that Phoenix provides. And the law states that you're not supposed to run the sidewalks. So as a service provider, we take shortcuts, usually during the hours where nobody's on the street. This just happened to be after breakfast, but it was a couple blocks away. And I, can, I could not even get up to the normal 15 miles an hour that these things go because the, the battery was so dead. So I was taking the back way in between the footprint center and I think there's a dentist office right there. And so I went on the sidewalk and then proceeded to try and go across the street, third street to grab the 50 yards away where my van was. And so I'm approaching the intersection and I look to my left and I see a gray BMW heading that direction toward me. And so I start, I let go of the throttle and I'm only going eight miles an hour, and so I'm coasting, approaching the crosswalk, and I look over, and there's a stop sign for him, and I look to make eye contact to make sure that he sees me. He is looking in the direction of my van. So he's not even looking in the direction he's trying to turn. He's looking in the other direction to make sure no one's coming. And so I see him, and I think I'm pretty sure, I, I'm pretty sure I said out loud, you're for sure going to come to a complete stop first. And so I swerved slowly, to the right to avoid him and without looking my direction or the direction he was going to go, he didn't just coast through, he accelerated and he hit me. And so it was at low speeds, but his momentum was increasing. And so because I saw him coming, I braced for impact, absorbed it with my left hand. And then his bumper hit the scooter, scooter slammed into my ankle. And so, um, I've taken ankle shots, moving these things around, just, you know, setting them up and, trying to move them around, they're heavy, and so uh, they're dense, so they hurt every time, and this was a little bit more than normal normal knock, and so, but I caught myself, 
because I'm riding these things 25, 30 miles a day. And so getting cat-like reflexes on these things. And so I caught myself, but the scooter fell, and I turned, and I just put my hands out. Like, are you fucking serious? And he creeped forward and then proceeds to drive away. He didn't get far because that morning at the Footprint Center around 1030, there was a delivery or a pickup being done with a 53-foot semi. So he wasn't going anywhere. So he pulled forward and then stopped. But because we live in an open carry state, I am not going to approach a stranger's vehicle, especially someone who just hit me, and try and exchange information after they just tried to flee the scene. So I just got my phone out, zoomed in nice and neat, got a picture, and then just proceeded to sit down on the curb. And the location that I was at at 3rd, the northeast corner of 3rd Street in Jackson is where all the police officers park. (laughs) So... Uh, I thought I had a pretty good chance of uh, getting someone's attention. So I, re- I reached out to the Phoenix PD and the automated voice told me to go online and try to file it there. Went online and they said, nope, you got to call in. I called in, got hung up on, called back in, finally got someone and they said, uh, so don't leave because you won't be able to file any report. And I was like, I'm not trying to. Like, I'm trying to go on with my day. I'm in pain, but, like, I don't need, it's like, do you need an ambulance? No. Fire? No. Like, but the dude hit me, and then he just didn't even have enough concern to make sure I was good. Because mm-hmm. I've not been in many accidents in my life, but I've been in, I had a situation where I fell asleep at the wheel after a night of DJing. This is back before I moved to Arizona. Shortly before I did. And I'm pretty sure that it was, like, one of the last few times I was going to be able to hang out with my guys. And so I was really tight with the bar crew. So I would DJ until at least midnight. And then we would spend another hour to three hours playing Kings and talking shit and just having a good time, right? Still drinking. And so I wound up driving and following one of the bartenders home because he was like, I'm tired. He's like, but I'm, I'm good as long as someone follows me home. Cool. I'll follow you home. So I followed him home. He's not in the direction of where my place was. So I followed him home. He got home safe. I was three minutes away from our apartment at the time. And there was a train coming. And so the, the tracks came or the, the lights came down. I It was three forty four o'clock in the morning. And so I was exhausted. And so I just was coming to a complete stop. And there was a car waiting as the, tro- the train was just slowly moving by. And so I just closed my eyes for a moment. And was awoke by the by the bump because I rear-ended the guy who was waiting at the train. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, I was coming to a complete stop, but I was so tired. I just closed my eyes and just went, just trying to exhale. And my eyes didn't open back up for a couple of seconds, apparently. And so, um, but I hit the guy. We got out. I was making sure he was good. Then it looked like there was no damage. I was, I was like, whatever the scratch I got, if there's something on the front of mine, I'm good with it. I was like, you good? He said he was fine. Train finished, and then he went forward, and I turned right to head to my place. That, long story short, that dude followed me home and then called the cops on me and then tried to make it a hit-and-run situation. <laughs> Yet this guy, fast forward to this week, to yesterday, and this guy hit me, low-speed collision, broad daylight, 10.30 in the morning, and then he just proceeded to try and go. And I was like, ah, okay. That's that That's that apathetic energy that a lot of people are on nowadays. The world's crazy. I get it. Be about yourself. But you got to have a level of consideration for people. And when that goes out the window and you double down on your apathy and you try to drive off, not only do you hit, then you run. Congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, my yesterday. And then I went into my group. Because I'm in a business, I'm in a group with business professionals, I, re- I reached out and was like, hey, what's the injury law situation in our network? And so I got some referrals, and I'll get some information on that. But um, I was telling you the uh, the way that the cop talked to me was very suspect. Yeah, Un-ironic- condescending. Unironically. And so, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's another one of those circumstances where privilege comes into play, and that person was in a Beamer, and so they're protecting their interests. So, as if we both don't pay taxes. Yeah, but 
their taxes are more important. Of course they are. Of course. So, yeah, man, that's mm. what's going on with me. What's what's been going on in Jake's world? So, during the day, when I'm not running around and doing stuff, I stay at home with the kids. And uh, so I, we talked about the last time on the show, Ruth had escaped. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now it's if she's snuck off and I don't notice for a little bit, I'm immediately running into the garage to make sure the garage door is closed. <laughs> cool. um, you know, run, running and checking the front door, making sure it's, you know, deadbolts locked and the, uh, the chains hooked up at the top. And yep. That's nuts. The, yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, I, uh, I went to the bathroom and I came back out and I sat down and I was looking around and I, I looked at Marlene and I said, where's Ruthie? She, she goes, oh, she's gone. Man. And I went, what? <laughs> And I I went I went out and I checked the garage and the garage door was wide open because I didn't, I guess I forgot to close. And so I was like, "What do I do?" Yeah. So I throw Marley in the van and throw I can throw Christopher in the seat and I do a lap. I go to the park and I, I run around the and I go back home. And I'm like, okay, maybe she's, you know. Hold on. You didn't check the house first? <laughs> no, because I saw the garage door was open and I was like, my psycho child's gone. Yep. And uh, so I run upstairs. And she's laying in, in my bed watching the TV and Dad, hey man. Go. <laughs> hey. Hey man. You can't, you can't just do that. Yeah. <laughs> So how do you remember to close the garage door now? Uh, I don't ever forget normally. Just I, the, I, but you've now seen how your fight or flight switch is on whenever <laughs> just the possibility of it is the case. Like, do they have like kid laser sensors or just sensors in general that, you know, a boundary sensor to where if it gets crossed, even I don't know, man. I'm, I think I'm going to have to sew an air tag under her fucking scalp or something. <laughs> yes, that's the bet. That is the uh, uh, more parentally responsible option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's but that's that's my new that's my new fear is like oh, gone girl, for sure, man. Yeah, for sure. That's that's interesting. How old again? How old is she now? She's four. Only four. Lordy. Yeah, both of my girls are older than that now. So, yeah. but even Anna, like, she's so much of a codependent that I don't think she'll take that risk because she knows that she doesn't have the she needs the confidence of someone else in proximity to her. So she's got a free spirit. Uh, I hope that she maintains that level of naivete but like yeah she hasn't tried to bolt off or and rylan isn't either so i haven't had to i haven't had to deal with that yet thank thank goodness because my god i mean we've got a pool so we've got a gate you know it's it's protected but like i didn't lose my edge when they were swimming without us like i was even when it felt like it. I was not paying attention for very long. I was watching, and not like a helicopter parent, but just like at the ready, in case you know they started screaming or one of them shouts toward the other. You know what I mean? Like that's mm -hmm. my oh yeah. And so that never went. That did not go away. It won't go away because I hear them choking in the bathtub <laughs> because they poured too much water on their face, you know, or something. Silly like that. They swim by themselves at the ages of five now, five and eight. 
unassisted, no floaties in the deep end. Mm -hmm. Like they have the capacity to take care of themselves to not only survive, but to enjoy the environment. And then they choke on water in the bathtub. So it's like knowing that I can never relax enough to, to allow or to be comfortable with a gone girl situation. But luckily I don't, the free spirit in Anna is tethered to my mom, to my wife's hip. So. Yeah, not Ruth. She's, she's out the door and saying hello. She's making, she got people to meet. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So who's the social butterfly like that? Is that you or? That's me. You. Okay. Did you talk to your mom and ask about that? If you had. When I was little, I tried to run away from home. Okay. And that there's a link there, I think. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I was about five or six. I think we solved it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just because you were curious. No, it's just, I can make it on my own. Ah, uh, okay. At five. Yeah. <laughs> and that's normal. That seems normal to you. I guess. And then, but, I don't know. <laughs> no way, dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. As an 80s baby, growing up in the 1900s, uh, we were latchkey kids, so we were nine and ten crossing six lanes of major highway traffic on Third Street going through Terre Haute. Like, and because the apartment complex, the family housing, was basically smack dab between two stoplights, we didn't walk all the way to the stoplight to cross. We went across the street. Right by the pedophile's house. That was lovingly referred to as Jack Off Jerry on in route to elementary school. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, man. Um, so I, I have that in me, but I don't. It's wild that my parents were comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, like, different time. Well. It's just like uh, the nice lady that Ruth ran into mm. uh, when she escaped, you know, like I think we're in a, a neighborhood where it's, that's fine. And I don't know if that's the adjective I'd use, but you know, it's, it's still, she is a four year old blonde hair, blue eyed, really cute kid. Uh, have you, have you, have you seen the show found? No. Bunch of bunch of Ruthies on there. <laughs> no, uh, it's I can't think of her name, and I I don't like doing this. I don't like not knowing their names. But the act, the lead actress, she was in uh, Shameless, and so um, it's the the black woman who is married to the goofy tall white guy. Do you watch Shameless? I have not. Okay. Hilarious. That's a great show. Um, anyway, I like her from that show. And then she brings in similar character traits to this show. The basis, the premise of the show is she was abducted as a kid and she escaped. They never found her abductor. She now dedicates her life to helping find kids who are taken. The name of the show is found. Um, the... The hook for the show is the fact that they never found her abductor because she imprisoned him. And so mm. she has him chained up in her basement. And because he's a serial killer or whatever, she uses him to help her solve cases. And so the whole point of the show or the whole plot of the show is she's really good at solving, helping find kids. And it's because of what she's doing. And so, um, but it's about kids getting abducted. And, uh, yeah, man. There's a one of the girls in the first episode. It's like, 
blonde hair, blue eyes, senator's daughter, like <laughs> all of those things. And so, um, but they they're in New York or whatever big city they're in. And so, you know, it's not nearly as friendly as the safe fine kind safe confines of the QC. Or is that Santan? Oh, I'm in Santan. Santan, okay. We're looking at a lot of stuff from Queen Creek and I put those two together every time. And they're all merging together. Right. (laughs) It'll all be Maricopa at some point. (laughs) Well, it's uh, Queen Creek and Florence are pushing their borders out. That's right. And Santan is going to get split and be absorbed into either or. Yeah. So, oh, so we got to figure out. Do we got to put a air tag on on Ruth? So, Nothing. or we just have to train Marley to be a snitch. Marley is a snitch, dog. Be a, be a better he, snitch instead of just being like, "Where's Ruth?" I don't know. No, nah, I need coordinates. I need details. <laughs> mm-hmm. I need you to be a hater and to ride on your sister so I know where they're at. Because my girls will snitch on each other in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Who did it? Point finger. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'll keep you safe. All right. So we, we just talked about your yeah, new... The, um, my paranoia. And that's yeah. like all the time. All the time. Yeah, that doesn't turn off. All the time. So uh, the next thing listed is... Uh, it says that your sobriety was tested recently. You want to go into... Yeah. Uh, so at the humble gig, part of the job is uh, sometimes you have to uh, check the back stock and load up a, uh, a pallet of various forms of uh, liquor and beer. And uh, fun. And so I was doing that, and I was just like, "Man, what would happen if this broke?" And somehow in my mind, I went immediately to like. drinking out of a broken bottle or like, Oh no, it's on my hand. You know, like, sure. Sure. And it was like, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) And, um, like I've said many times before, I think about drinking every day. Right. And then if I, I didn't, you know, if I just, like I needed more proof that I'm an alcoholic, right? I was like, "Oh, if this breaks, you can just drink it." <laughs> Oops, happy accident, right? You know, like sure. Shoot, man, and it was so. How was the? Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, and then another part is at night we pull stuff out, put it where it go needs to go, and you can pull the alcohol pallet out. It's the same thing. Oh man, if a box of this shit just falls off, yeah, what a mess that'd be. And you just and that's your instinct. Like you, 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 you dreamt up that hypothesis, that fake situation in an instant. Yeah. Yep. Did you taste it? Could you taste it? No. Okay. No, but it's like because, like, if I think hard enough about Crown. Crown and Coke. What do you yeah. think a lot of? I'll like salivate and I'll have, and my brain will register that, the the sweetness, that taste. Like sometimes when I have a Dr. Pepper, I'll be like, James. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, or uh, every time I see Sunny Delight, I think of pirate juice. <laughs> yep. Yep. I saw this guy. Or I had a, a clip sent to me this week was talking about uh steel reserve. Mm-hmm. And, oh my god. Or he was talking about four he was like making jokes about the different types of alcohol and how terrible they are. So he started with four loco and then he went into steel reserve and I was like, Oh man, I missed the four loco boat. Like I remember that being around. I remember people drinking and talking about it, but the last time i remember drinking beer harder beer with the purpose of getting drunk pre-gaming or whatever 
was Steel Reserve, and it was so bad. It was so bad. I don't know what I don't. I can't remember what the combination. And he said this like he said WD forty mixed with something. It was hilarious. Mm-hmm. But it's it's yeah, it was terrible. But yeah, I can still like. And it's not good. Same thing with smearing off ice. I can have like I can close my eyes and think hard enough about spring break, and remember the the time that me and my guy Paco split a thirty pack. And it's like no. Why? But my but my, my brain still has that embedded to where it's like my belly my belly just made a noise thinking about it it's like no mm-hmm. <laughs> no thank you man Ugh. yeah so did that's what well, that was my question was did that come up in conversation either during the hiring process or now that you're an employee with whoever you work with uh not during the hiring process or anything but there was uh a guy that's like, hey, man, I usually get everybody shooters, you know, for after work on Halloween. And I said, not for me, you know. The, and that was one of those things, too, where I could just easily. Yeah. Been like, oh, sure. Cool. Thanks, man. It's like, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, God. Just handing it out like that. But like, no, I, everyone there is pretty respectful. There's a, there's another cat that's been sober for a little bit too. He's, you know, in court and stuff now, but you know, he's been sober for a little bit and working it and, um, or ordered sobriety. Yeah. I mean, like he, he wants it. No doubt. There's, yeah, there's paths. There's different pathways. So he. But, do did you feel did it make you feel a type of way just that that was what was offered or no that like that was fine but it was like what snuck up in my head was like you could totally get away with that because what happens if that same guy the guy who's still in court or whatever if he goes hey man just rant like you know like that that super hypothetical scenario that pops up and he goes hey man this fell off the the pallet broke the seal do you want to split this like because you're drawing up that in your mind and then you can Mm -hmm. just as easily have the opposite side of your brain laugh out loud at yourself and get a chuckle out of even having that thought, what happens when that thought isn't derived from you? Does that affect the way that you're able to reply to that? Are you are think, you more influenced, like, in terms of being triggered, or? I think if it's not my idea, it's easier for me to say no. It's easier if it's not your idea. Okay. That's good. No, I'm, that's st- good. I'm stubborn like that. Like, you know, we've talked before, we, we've talked before, I, you know, I have a hard time working for people. Yeah. I have a hard, like, yeah. you know, I can do all bad by myself. I don't need your help. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, that's why working at the bar was easy. Very good. So you, you know, because you're moving the alcohol pallets, it's not a big deal because you can, you can compartmentalize that. Yeah. Into what it is, but still give yourself the, the grace to laugh at. The temptation. <laughs> yeah, man. There was just something about there was just something about the other night and I was like, fuck, that's a great idea. <laughs> moment yeah, in the moment, in a split second. <clears throat> then I had to be like, hey dummy. <laughs> yeah. What's well, funny because I drive in off of the seventeen, from the sixty to the seventeen, go to seventh avenue. And so I drive through that area where I don't know what company it is, but one of the cannabis brands, they do their manufacturing or whatever they're growing there. And so it reeks like cannabis in that area. And so every time you drive through windows up, AC on, you're not even trying to smell it. It just punches you in the face. And so most times when I drive through there and I catch that aroma, I look down to see where my, to see if I have my thing on me, not to hit it, not to do anything with it. Just as a reminder, like it's that, the connection i smell it and then i look to see if i have it on me and that's it and i laugh at myself because same thing to where it's like 
that hypothetical just conjures itself into your thought process simply based off of that muscle memory. And you're like, but like when I'm at an apartment complex doing a move and you smell it, I'm like, oh, it smells good in here. <laughs> <laughs> like just as a, you know, if anything, just an icebreaker because there's some people who are, who smoke loud stuff and then you show up and you're leaving that place whether you like it or not, smelling like it. Mm -hmm. so, like it's like going into a fish joint, a fish fry joint, going to Long John Silver's. You're gonna smell like some hush puppies on your way out. <laughs> that grease, that thick, that grease is thick. So, uh, but yeah, that's another thing that happens to me every so often. Speaking of Long John Silver's, every so often I'm like, I want some of that nasty shit. <laughs> there's, this, I mean, there's one off of Rittenhouse. I think every time, yeah. I, it's a, it is a silly thought in my brain. It's the Taco Bell Long John Silver's combo. Yeah. Yes. And I have yet to go. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. Discipline, you know. Congratulations. The uh, the comedian who uh, I went to high school with, um, she just released her album on Halloween. Uh, it's called Asian American Psycho, and she is a uh, she is a Long John Silver's aficionado. Ooh. Like, I have a clip yeah. that I'm cutting up for her uh, to put out on social media to where she talks about that. And they're like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite guilty pleasure? Off the hip. Long jumps at worst. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, these are people from, I don't even know where she was at the time, maybe New York. But she's talking to people, and they're like, what is Long John Silver's? And, like, they had never had it. And so they tried to talk shit about it. And uh, one of the guys was trying to compare it to a fish fillet, which she didn't take kindly to. <laughs> It was a funny, it was a great clip, but uh, yeah, shout out to Hannah and uh, dropping her new, her latest album. When's she coming on the show? I don't know, man. She's been busy. Uh, we had a brief conversation about working together. I reached out on several occasions and she didn't make the time. So uh, whatever happened after that point happened without me, but she got people to help her, which was the most important thing, which is why we were speaking in the first place. So. Uh, she got the help that she needed, and she's moving. She's making moves, so I could reach out to her again um, and say what's up. But um, yeah, I'm sure that she would have stories for days. Hell yeah, because she. I don't even know how long. I'm not sure how long she's been sober, but I know that she was down for a long time, like long time. So um, yeah, she's you know actively active in her sobriety as well and um she is not she is not the normal cookie cutter story she had like she came from that privilege but she definitely didn't choose that path and so mm -hmm. you know people like paul with his circumstance he came from the haves and then mm -hmm. went the path that he did and so same situation similar situation similar storyline but you know different in the spider verse you know i speaking of that i've seen bits and pieces of that movie at different points in time mm -hmm. and i almost have watched the whole thing the I, watched, one. I watched it the other day not like i put on netflix just to put it on while i was working on something else and it showed up and it was i put i clicked on it not even thinking about it. It's, yep, I want that in the background. Yep. And I wound up watching most of it because it is, it is phenomenal, man. Those are well put together. It's incredible, the depth. Both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the storyline, the, the acting, I mean, the, the drawing and the CGI, it's, it is a visual overload. If you have a hard time processing information, that, that movie might move too fast for you. Mm-hmm. Cause it's a lot and quick. It is a lot. But I like the dynamic of the different types of spider people. And yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's really well done. Anyway. So what's this note here that says business and work? Well, no, I was just, you know, how's business? Oh. How's everything going? Like, I guess we touched on that a bit. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Just, bit. just got the, got the rig going. Um, 
just just trying to now make it work for me and because i put so much work in to make sure that you and anyone else who helps with this process doesn't have to deal with so much of the bullshit that i did because those are those kind of pain points that people will create that creates a high turnover rate in lesser jobs and so right. this isn't a tough job like what we're doing is pretty simple pretty straightforward oh and the access that i got on the spin team app which is apple and android um so i use my android phone to do most of the work and then when i come across a a unit that is either straight up making a noise or it shows ss or it shows you know or 55 or it needs addressed i can use this additional app that will unlock a battery that will unlatch the lock or whatever and so it is a different um, sequence. And so if one, like the retry unlock for the battery or whatever on the Ranger app, if that doesn't work, it allows me to use this and I have even more success. And so, yeah, it's uh, getting that access to that and then being able to just, being able to just go, just being able to go now and not having to worry about going back and spending all this time the, on the in-between because I'm still hitting my watch every day. Categorizing them, making sure that it's nice and neat. I got a graph, and the last nine days in a row, the graph looks almost identical based off of the charting. So I know my consistency is there. I got, I'm doing between 10, oh, excuse me, I'm doing between 12 and 16 units consistently an hour cruising dog like not yeah. I'm not running anywhere I'm not jogging and I'm setting up additional units in the process you know you you come up on three units and two of them are in the bushes taking the time to pick those two other bushes not getting paid for it still hitting 12 16 an hour so imagine if I didn't do that bro copy and paste copy and paste get a get a, a four to six of us out on the uh, out on the prowl Consistently, it's going to be a nice situation. Not including Tucson, which is waiting, which they have just taken more units from because they haven't had anybody to be able to work it. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going good. Um, had, a, had a nice week last week in terms of moving um, and doing delivery jobs. Got another job lined up. Um actually one tomorrow that I just got done is I'm moving a big fake tree <laughs> <laughs> from a furniture store from Bob's in Chandler spoke with a uh, nice lady and that's the interesting thing about my business is I have QR codes I have you know social media I have all of these digital forms of communication and the best way that I, the, and we got to where we needed to be in terms of an estimate and getting things going over the phone, having that conversation, working in collections, working in customer service for 15 years like I did. I don't like talking to people if I have a choice. I prefer text because I can speak, I can be doing other things to still talk to you or still communicate. If I'm speaking with you, I need to have my focus on you so i prefer to be able to do multiple things um and people don't always know what they want when they talk to you so i have a form i send her the form and then by the time that i called her she's like i'm still trying to get this form to you da, 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 da. And i was like nope just stop that got my notepad out and i was like tell me your information and so within three minutes we had it taken care of but i prefer to not do it that way because it saves me the time but it's one of those situations where if I want the business, I'm going to take care of my customer the way they like to be taken care of. So had a brief conversation and we'll see them tomorrow. So doing decent with the business and then hopefully heading into second quarter of next year with mission on the, on deck and then uh bird releasing their next line of uh, swappable scooters. So yes, sir. Business for me is going all right. Um, everybody's been consistent, checking in. 
about time for that mid month money to roll in. Nice. When does uh is there like a seasonality to shows? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a little break. So, so we're yeah. And then February, March, everything will be back into full gear until about October. October. Okay. So the holidays. Let everybody get them natural gains on. <laughs> yep. I mean, there's like there's later shows still, but uh, they're fewer, farther in between. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, no, I'm taking this time to really pack some stuff on. I had an athlete uh, tear their ACL playing intramural soccer. Yummy. Pretty miffed about that, eh? Intramural soccer, yeah. That's how I pulled my hamstring, man. Pissed. So what what does that setback look like? Well, she has to decide what kind of surgery she's going to have. Okay, so surgery then, is a must. Uh-huh. Got you. Uh-huh. And then figure out what kind of rehab is going on. Man. I'm going to go see our business networking group, uh, our chiropractor, Dr. Ben Leong at um, Rehab Lab. I'm going to see him tomorrow. Oh, see what he gives me, what the assessment is. I know I got a lot of, I need a lot of oil. <laughs> this old Tin Man suit, I'm lugging around. So I'm looking forward to, not looking forward to the pain, but I'm looking forward to getting getting a pathway to alleviating some of it because my hips, my lower back, super stiff. I carry a lot of stress on my shoulder and I have TMJ. So it's like that naturally turns into headaches and tinnitus high five. And then I've got <laughs> all the stuff going on with my, my, my arms and my, on my hands and my ankles. So everybody's got their bumps and bruises in this car. This little car bump I had the other day didn't help. So, Oh, man, with everything cooling down and the physicality of everything I do, I am in some fucking pain. Yeah, dog. I'm in pain most of the time. That was I was filling out. He has like a pre-screening sheet that you do for, uh, for the new patients. And he's like, where's your level of pain for this thing? He's like primary, secondary, additional. He's like, for your primary pain source, what's the pain level? I'm like, six. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like more than not. Yep. Or what's the what did it start as? Six. Does it go away? Six. <laughs> yes, but no. So uh yeah. So he does uh needlework, dry needling. Mm-hmm. So I haven't experienced that. I, I think I did acupuncture once. And this is similar but not the same. So that might be a part of the process, but I don't know, man. My elbow, like, I still got, like, tennis elbow from years back. So, just getting my body tuned up. At least trying to. Cause I've been putting it through some stress. Gotta love it. So, I, I, need, to, I need to call Dr. Butler. Go. Go see our our buddy Chris. Have him snap, crackle, pop me back into place, and then um, keep a keep a lookout. Um, I need someone that does no shit um, athletic massage. Okay, not just not just deep tissue. But so the guy I'm going to see, he's uh, based out of Tempe, and he does like specialty work based off of your athleticism and so bodybuilders have specific you know a cadence or a certain uh training that basketball players wouldn't football players wouldn't soccer players wouldn't right and so based off of what you do he'll build your program around what you do and that's what the rehab in the rehab lab is all about and so um 
I can give you his information for sure. But if you're if you're looking for somebody out closer to you, or I can reach out to because we've got a bunch. There there are plenty of BNI. There are over eighty chapters, and I know that at least four of them. One of the biggest ones is in your side of town. So, hell yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Do you have a preference, man, woman, age wise, any of that? I, I'd rather have a dude do it, honestly. Um, okay. Just... No, some people, yeah, some people are just more comfortable. So that's why I asked. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Because the other person you've been seeing is a lady, right? No. No? No. There, so there was, there, I've seen everybody that does massages there at uh, Dr. Butler's place, and there's a, I go see Roberto most of the time, and each one of the ladies has been one time. Yeah, that's that's funny because I don't think I have a preference. I know when I go to get reflexology done, if it's a guy, I'm not any less. I assume I'm gonna get harder work done, but that's not always been the case. <laughs> I just yeah, I had this little lady take care of me last last time we went, and she did me in, bro, like. She had some technique that I had not experienced before. And I was like, oh. Because the, the reason why I stopped going to my chiropractor is because it felt like it was just a routine. Like, it felt like church used to be. I was going just to go. But I didn't feel like I was really getting anything out of it. And so that's why I stopped going. So after tomorrow, I need to figure out and prioritize maintenance on my body. Because so much of what I do is physical in nature. So. About that time. Yes. Yes, it is. Your wheels are going to start falling off sooner than later. Don't worry. Any younger. You wanted to cover tonight? No, man. I think we covered uh, just about everything. Everything that's been going on. Um, I, I do enjoy our talks. We shouldn't have two more weeks in between them. I but, agree. I agree. So even if... Even if next week we're both feeling like this, we're both dead ass tired because of our jobs or our kids or whatever, we still say, Hey man, mm-hmm. let's set aside thirty minutes and just ramble. Just hammered out. Yep. We record it we yeah, get... so what? The the vent the vent definitely needed to happen no matter what. I was I was watching um the series with Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Uh mm-hmm. Rob... have you watched that? No, it's a. You, do you know the story behind it? Uh, they bought a, a soccer team. Yeah, so they bought a soccer team, um, and yeah, it's a it's a it's a really good really good watch. And um, they were talking about um, fuck, I just forgot what I was gonna say. What did we just say right before this? Are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Okay. You're watching the you're watching the series. No, what did what were we talking about right before I, I tried to go into this? We were talking about Yeah. Yeah. I honed in on what we were talking about and then it Yeah. Yeah. I focused on <laughs> Brian Reynolds and Rob uh Mecca 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 yeah. behind the soccer team. Tied into what what we had just said, and I forgot what it was. Anyway, just kidding. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this back and uh, laugh. Go, uh, hey, Jack so it's just, it's just how they're how they're bros. That no it soccer was, team, uh, and there was something that happened in the series that I wanted to say, and I can't remember what it was now. Anyway. Yeah, I haven't watched any of it. I just oh, that's nice. Post ADHD. <laughs> it's good for you. It builds character. Uh, you want to touch on before we sign? No, sir. Oh, that's what I wanted. That's what it is. See, you were talking about the rant. How it feels good to still have the conversation. I said the whole thing about Wrexham is because the players. They interview them, they talk about their families, and you get to really get insight on who they are outside of just being players on a team bought by these Hollywood actors, right? And so one of them in the last episode I watched was just saying how 
talking to the camera, the crew, the interviewers, all that, he said the way that they've been um, making him dive into his past, it really, you know, gave him the opportunity to revisit how he has conversations with his mom and with his dad and how they, um, what happened because um, one of the players in the team, uh, his father was gay. And so he and his mom stuck through it while he was growing up without him knowing. And so now that he's old, older and has a different relationship with his parents, he got to really examine that and then, you know, highlight the strength in both of them for handling the situation they did for their sake. And so that's what I wanted to, to parlay with this was that it feels like therapy. And that's what they said. Yeah. Being able to have these conversations, even if it's not pen in a pad, laying down on the couch, you're still revealing, you're still examining. And so, yes, that was what, off your chest, off sorry, your heart. Sorry about the random, uh, going off the trail, but, uh, no, it applied and it yeah. all, it tied together at the and end. That, that was the reason why I wanted to say it. I was like, man, where, how did that disappear? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. if next week we're feeling down, we're feeling sore, we're feeling numb, still reach out and say, Hey, 30 minutes. Let's talk for sure. Sounds good to me. Sign yeah. up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the sober swell podcast. Once again, my name is Jake Howard. And I go by DJ Swirl. Chocolate and vanilla swirl. Oh, hey, be sure to like and subscribe and share this with everyone you know. All of the things. All of the things. Bye. Hey, it's Warhorse. Do you want your workouts to look like this? Or do you want your workouts to slay? When Warhorse picks his pre-workout, he wants it to slay. If you want second place, go with somebody else. If you want to be a champion, go with royalty, nutrition.